guys, I hope you guys are safe at home in quarantine, but don't forget to subscribe here at Fino Boxing and follow my personal one at Adriana underscore sports. And guess what? We're going to knock out this coronavirus. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> On August uh, 28th on the zone against an experienced fighter, you know, Ms. Boskis. How eager are you to get back in action? I'm extremely eager. It's a... Uh... Man, it's been hard to not be in the ring. I think every fighter can relate. So just trying to get back in the groove and get things going again, get back to the fighting life, it's, you know, it's how I function. So not being able to box kind of messes with my head. And, you know, I'm, just, I'm ready to get the show on the road and get this one out of the way. It's been difficult for a lot of fighters to get the proper training, proper sparring. Has it been difficult for you to kind of get ready for this type of fight? It has, it has and it hasn't, you know, it's all, it's how you look at it. So I try not to look at it as a problem um, because then again, it messes with your head. So it's more of just like, well, there was adjustments that had to be made and I try to make them so I can, you know, be the best version of myself. And it's all mental for me at this point in my career. So there was adjustments and it's been a change, but I do have some outlets that allowed it to be a little easier, even though there's a virus, you know, cleaner um, people really looking out. You know, I've been testing every three days. I have everything's being sterilized constantly. So there's a lot of things on my end that are helpful, but it's been a change. <laughs> and, and yeah, it definitely takes uh, some, some adjusting to, you know, for all of us, just for no more day-to-day -day lives there. Things are, in a sense, we actually took for granted before this pandemic. Uh, obviously, I don't know if you got the news, but the main event on August uh, 28th, Jorge Linares, he tested positive for COVID-19. So he's off, he's off the card. We'll see if they find a replacement for him. But you mentioned yourself that you've been getting tested uh, every other three days. Yeah, I've been I've tested every Tuesday and Thursday or Monday, Monday and Thursday. Um, so we're just keeping it constant, making sure that, um, you know, I'm still good. My, my sparring partners are good. You know, you're, we can't spar unless we know you're good. It's again, it's been a process having to go through that, but definitely taking the precautions to kind of keep this going. You know, we don't want this fight canceled, um, especially not off something, you know, with the virus, it's, it sucks because um, you don't know how to control it. You know, no one's telling you how you can and can't for sure avoid it. So you're doing the precautions, but you're still hoping that, you know, you have good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's difficult. So I didn't know that about Leonardo's. Um, it sucks, you know, I, I feel bad for him. Um, that's not a good way to feel. And I can only imagine some. I didn't know, but it sucks. Yeah, it's difficult. It's definitely difficult for Linares, you know, especially, you know, just a few weeks away from fight night. Uh, you're taking on Noemi Wolski, someone who's very experienced, 30 fights in. She originally fought Sula Morvina, who's also with Golden Boy Promotions. And he's, she's fought, you know, Heather Hardy, tons of big names. What type of fight are you expecting from her? I think she's going to give me a good fight. You know, I know she's going to hold, like you said, she's, she's not, this isn't the first person, I'm not the first big name that she's fought. So I know she's game, you know, I know she's not going to spot too lamb. I know she's not going to be too worried or but she's going to try to show up and she's really going to try to, to win. And I, that's the kind of person I need. I don't need someone who's going to not represent a challenge whatsoever, but I also need to be comfortable with the situation. So I feel like she's a really good opponent for me as far as, you know, she's not going to, to be afraid to fight me. She's, she's going to fight. And that's really what I need. I, it's been, it's been the whole year, you know, we need, I need a fight. So I need somebody that's going to present some sort of challenge and some sort of risk so I can feel better on the next one. Yeah. Last time we saw you in action, obviously, was on the Canelo Kovalev uh, pay-per-view. I mean, the zone card. Sorry, not pay-per-view. But obviously, you won a war, a close fight against uh, Sinez Estrada. You suffered through those cuts. I think it was going to happen in the fourth or fifth round. You were able to battle through it until the doctor decided to, you know, send it to the scorecards. Do you think with the victory over um, Naomi, will that open the possibility for a rematch against um, Sinez Estrada? I think, yeah, it's going to contribute to it. I think at the same, I think in the same way, like I just got to focus on me. It's not when I 
before the me and Tanisa, I was still me. And I feel like um, I, I want that fight, you know. I want that fight, you know, I, I need that fight for me. But right now I still got to be a world champion. I still have to continue my career like I already beat her. You know, like who's next, who's next, who's next. And that's inevitable. It's going to happen. I'm I'm not going anywhere. And I'm a fighter. I'm here to I'm here to win shit. So I'm not going anywhere. You're going to have to fight me. You're going to have to fight me eventually. Like the plan is in my life is to box and to be the best. So regardless or not, she's not going anywhere. You know, she's right in the middle. You know, her career is the best it's ever been. You know, I this is what I do. So she's going to have to fight me whether and if it, the roles were reversed, I would have to fight her. She's not going anywhere. So that's kind of just what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to win, and I'm trying to get some world titles. And when our, when we cross paths again, we cross paths again. But it's going to happen. Um, and I'm hoping it happens soon. But, you know, only God knows the moves you make. Yeah, it's a, it's a fight that, you know, five fans want to see it again. The media wants to see it again. It's one of those fights that always gets talked about. We want to see that rematch. So obviously, like you mentioned, you know, it's one of those things that eventually will happen. I want to get your thoughts. Obviously, you know, even though she had a, a world record, a uh, seven-second knockout against Miranda, uh, she kind of took a black eye to boxing. What are your thoughts on, on her opponent for the last time that she was out? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard answer because I see it two ways. I see it one way of, hey, that was a good move for, for, on her team. Um, she looked, she looked like a freaking superhero, you know, you have, you know, you have her, you have people who don't watch boxing or they see the clip and they're like, oh my God, who's this girl? She's amazing. That's the plan. That's the whole thing. That's the plan. That's what you want. And I, kudos to that. You know, I respect that move, but as a fighter, you know, someone who has to get in there, someone who's fought you, um, someone who you say you're world champion with material, and I don't feel like that was a world champion move. Um, I wouldn't, you just don't do that. You, you shouldn't have got, you shouldn't have gone to someone that low um, or that green, sorry. Um, you gotta, you gotta test yourself. You just, you're world champion a contender now. Like you're, you should be evolving. That was someone that you should have fought a long time ago, you know, a long, long time ago. And, to go back to that, to me, it is, I wouldn't, it doesn't make any sense. So, so, so if that was a fight against Miranda, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, you know, take, take the fight if it was offered to you, knowing that. What I don't even think they would have, I'd, on and all honesty, I don't even think anybody would have offered me that. I don't, even right now, they're not even offering me stuff like that. Like, as of right now, I have never been offered anything like that, like for this fight too. Like, well, I, I don't think anybody would have offered me that. And if they did, I wouldn't have took it either. Like, I just won, you know, um, if I was in her spot, like, I just won on a world stage. I got a belt. I'm an interim title. I got a, I got a, who's better? Who's next? Who's next? And I know you need to tune up. I understand all that. Um, I'm not expecting her to jump into a world title fight. But you don't go that. You don't do that. <laughs> you know, it's a. Uh, that's where it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, it's a business and she looked she looked good, man. It made her look she looked good, looked fast, but but it was seven seconds and that's why I see it both ways, you know. Yeah, it was definitely a highlight reel, but you know, like you say, you know, the, the talent level she was facing was definitely super low. Uh Marlene, do you feel obviously you had a lot of success, you know, in the Olympics and also outside of boxing, you know, we see you in commercials and you kind of become the face of female boxing as well. Do you feel that that puts a target on you because we see some hate, you know, hate for coming not only from Sydney Sestrada, but also now from Clarissa Shields taking shots at you. Do you, you know, what do you, what do you make of that? It's been like that, you know, for a lot of my life in my boxing, in my boxing life. It's been a lot. It's been like that a lot in my boxing life. So from the outside in, it looks like, oh man, like this is like, it should bother me. But I've been dealing with this stuff before anybody noticed it. So, you know, they they just join together and they like to talk about me. 
but I don't really care. I don't pay attention. Uh, I see people how I see people regardless. You know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Clarissa. Never liked Tanisa to begin with. Um, as far as boxing goes, as a person, you know, whatever. Um, but what are you going to do? You know, if they might have a target on me, I don't know why still. Clarissa, I'm like, you have two gold medals. Why are you worried? What about, what, what about me that bothers you so bad? Um, maybe that I don't care. Denise, the same thing. Like, I know why she has a problem or had a problem, but it's like they're all, everybody always has something to say about me. And I kind of just mind my, try to mind my business. If something bothers me, I'll say it. But for the most part, it's like, I have better things. I have to, better things I've always had better things to do so I have friends (laughs) I don't know I told my dad like because my dad gets annoyed you know he's like you gotta say something I'm like Bubby I didn't get into boxing to make friends these are boxers they're gonna be upset so it's it's fine like it's okay but I mean you know obviously outside looking in you would think oh two Olympic teammates you know both of you guys met on the Olympics I would imagine there would be a bond between you two, you know, not only, especially being in different weight classes. You know, what happened? What was the fella? I don't know if you want to, you know, share some light into it, but what happened that just, you know, became a love and hate relationship between you two? Because um, we've, we've dealt with each other for so long. We've been close and then we've been not close and then she has a problem and I don't like that she has a problem. So it's kind of like, uh, it all started yeah I guess it did have a lot to do with my popularity at the very beginning when we were younger you know it's like well I meddled with a gold so why are you being treated like you have a gold I have the gold and I'm like I don't know you know I don't know but we're not the same race we're not the same weight class um our money isn't affecting each other whatsoever so I don't see what the big deal is and then she got two gold medals and I didn't, and I wasn't mad. I was just like, all right, like, good for you. And it just became a thing where she just has a thing with me, every move I make. So it could be from the beginning, but she should be over it. And she, she's done so much. If I was her, I'd get over it. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how people's <laughs> brain works sometimes. I don't know. But it all started with that. Yeah, I guess with, it started with, that I was being treated like I got the gold when she got the gold and I got the bronze. And then it just kind of never went away. There's been a lot of things said and we've been like before the Sinisa fight, we were friends, you know, we were, she was talking to me every day. She was messaging me, asking how I am. We've been, we're talking, we're texting. She told me when she got to the MGM and then I lost and she took a picture with Sinisa. So it was just like, well, kind of weird people don't know that stuff it's just like boxing it's women it's politics it's a lot of stuff so yeah I mean we see we see that friendship with French on Cruz you know just on social media I know she went to the fight as well I don't know if you know this but she almost got into a fight with uh Jenny Sestrato's team at the media room when you fought each other I don't know if you knew that no one people my friends try not to get me upset <laughs> but I heard <laughs> Yeah, because I get, I, I have, I'm extremely patient until I'm not. So um, she did tell me, I did hear some stuff, but I don't know any of the details. She just, they said that someone said something stupid about, you know, me being in the hospital or where, where's your friend now or something. And it was just like, well, you sound like you broke my head with your, with your fist. It was, you headbutted her, so you shouldn't be real proud of it. And I think she was already just frustrated um, because she sees everything from my end. People don't realize that I do take a lot of heat. I just don't say anything. So she was kind of in the fight with me. She was taking all the heat. She was hearing everything. People, She sees it from all angles. And I think um, it just probably really pissed her off. And she blew up. She blew her fuse. She didn't keep her calm anymore. It was from my understanding, but not in no... Um, exactly who she was going to fight or, or what or anything like that. Yeah, there, there was some, some worse exchange, but obviously, well, no, no, no punches between both groups. But, you know, from that fight, I mean, I don't even know how you did it. You know, you had a nasty cut on the forehead and it just, 
like magically you recover. I see no scar. I mean, I believe you posted a picture just a couple of days ago, a couple of days after, and it was like, you know, nothing had happened. What was the key to, you know, what is it that you recover so fast and you were able to heal that quickly? My dad says I got good blood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was made to fight. I feel like I really was. Like, I don't really get a lot of, um, I'm not, a, I don't bleed easily. I don't bruise easily. Um, people think I like really watch with my skin and I do all these remedies. I don't, you know, I just show up as much as my face. Um, so I think that was really a lot, a lot to do with it. Just my, I have good blood and it really healed up. I took care of it uh, the way I was supposed to, but it really took me 10, I counted to 12 days, 10 days. Um, Cause I had a photo shoot um, with Ford Latino after, and I scheduled it obviously not knowing any of that was gonna happen. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna win this fight, and then I'm gonna go do this, and it's gonna be okay. And then when it happened like that, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? My face was so swollen. I look like um, that uh, character on Star Trek, the when he just kept, like just okay, it yeah. Was, I don't it know was the name, so, but I know exactly who it is. Yeah, it yeah. was so bad and I was like oh my god my face and it was like all swollen and I was more like I was like counting down the days like okay this is how much it's healed I have seven days to issue okay this is how much is healed I have five and I was like calling my manager two days before like I don't think I'm gonna be ready I still have black eyes and but lit the day before I left I just had a little bit of black eyes right just a little bit and then the day I woke up for the shoot it was basically cleared up. They used a little bit of makeup, and it was still tender, but you couldn't tell. You couldn't tell. It's a lot of healing to do. So, thank God for my jeans in that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gracias a Dios that you were able to pull it off, and obviously, you know, be there for the shoot. And yeah, we we'll wish you much success. We can't, you know, we look forward to seeing you back in action on Friday, August twenty eighth against Army Volskis. We know that you know another world title pop opportunity might happen right after that, so we we'll wish you the best. Thank you so much for taking the time with us here at Fino Boxing, and have a good one. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always. That's us. Have a good one. Bye bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe here to Fino Boxing and follow us at all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing and my personal one is at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy.